I have received so many requests to go through this indictment uh, and put it into multiple pieces so that it fits within the format here on TikTok. I uh, have thought long and hard about it and decided I would uh, go ahead and make a series going through line by line, word by word, this entire indictment. This will, of course, take multiple posts, so I hope everybody uh, stays with me. I will put them all into a folder once they've all been up and published, but I will just go again line by line through this indictment. This indictment is United States versus Donald Trump and grand jury original violations set out count one violation of 18 USC 371 conspiracy to defraud the United States count two 18 USC 1512 sub K conspiring to obstruct an official proceeding count three 18 USC sections 1512 C two obstruction of an attempt to obstruct an official proceeding and count four which is 18 usc section 241 a conspiracy against rights let's get into it the grand jury charges that at all times material to this indictment on or about the dates and at the approximate time stated below introduction paragraph one the defendant, Donald J. Trump, was the 45th president of the United States and a candidate for re-election in 2020. The defendant lost the 2020 presidential election. Two, despite having lost, the defendant was determined to remain in power. So for more than two months following the election day on November 3rd of 2020, the defendant spread lies that there had been outcome determinative fraud in the election and that he had actually won. These claims were false and the defendant knew that they were false, but the defendant repeated and widely disseminated them anyway. To make his knowingly false claims appear legitimate, create an intense national atmosphere of mistrust and anger, and erode public faith in the administration of the election. Number three, the defendant had a right, like every American, to speak publicly about the election and even to claim falsely that there had been outcome determinative fraud during the election and that he had won. He was also entitled to formally challenge the results of the election through the lawful and appropriate means, such as by seeking recounts or audits of the popular vote in states or filing lawsuits challenging ballots and procedures. Indeed, in many cases, the defendant did pursue these methods of contesting the election results, his efforts to change the outcome in any state through recounts, audits, and legal challenges were uniformly unsuccessful. Stay tuned for part two. Asking Mr. Daniel Sims to allow these 19 people in so that they can assist with the counting just as the Democrats are in counting. Now, Mr. Sims has said that there are COVID rules that he cannot break, and therefore he's not allowing these people in. If that is the case, let's take 10 or 12 or 15 Democrats out, and let 10 or 12 or 15 or 19 Republicans in. These, these fine people have been on a rooftop in the sun, and they are well-behaved, well-groomed, but all... Uh, cooperative and patient, and they merely want their opportunity to help count and watch the counting. And everyone in this country now knows that overnight, 200,000 votes were suddenly appeared in the city of Detroit. That's a lot of counting. And those, if there's 19 Democrats down there that are counting, it's only fair that 19, now the number looks to be about 25, should be permitted to go down and count just like the Democrats. So I'm asking you, Mr. Daniel Sims, please allow these Michigan residents to come in at this time. It's now 3.26 p.m. and then many of them be up here two hours. I called them and I asked them to come up. And they, they took days out of their working schedule. They, they, they took a half day, a day. To assist with the democracy in this country. Right. Right. Now they're being told they got to wait on a rooftop because the, because the, there are COVID rules and it doesn't make sense. The building is acres and acres. They all have face masks. And if there's 15 or 20 Democrats, then 15 or 20 Republicans should be let in, alternately at least. Exactly. They all have masks on. 
None of them appears to be sick, and nor have you asked them if they're sick. You could simply ask each one, do you have any COVID symptoms? No. 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 Do any of you have, have you, any of you been with anyone in COVID, that has COVID in the past 24 hours? No. no. Well, that's right, we have been. We have, this group has been.